H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to H2K Infosys videos. Thanks for watching the videos on Selenium with Java. So now in this video, I'm going to basically show the overview of Selenium. That is precisely the history of Selenium. How did it came to the market? And what are the versions that are available in the market right now? Uh, I'm going to give this overview at this point of time before I start the training on Code Java. It is very important for us to understand uh, what is the history behind uh, Selenium uh, tool and uh, who are the people who are responsible for developing it. So after this particular video, I'm going to move towards the training on your Code Java. <clears throat> Uh, coming back to it, uh, as we have seen that uh, uh, the the Selenium as a tool, uh, we are going to see that first of all, what is Selenium all about? That is, what is the history of Selenium? Okay. So first of all, uh, what is Selenium all about? It's a portable software testing framework, and specifically made made for uh, automating your web applications. We cannot automate a Windows application uh, with Selenium and it's an open source tool. There are a lot of tools available for automating your web applications per se uh, HP UFT from QT from uh, your uh, Hewlett Packard then we have IBM Rational Robo from IBM and all but uh, this tool is specifically very important and very um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of usage of this particular tool only based on the fact that it is an open source tool. Other tools what I've spoken about is all commercial tools which are available in the market. Yeah, uh, this gives you a complete framework to actually automate your web applications as a whole. You can automate the whole web application and get results out of it. And since it is an open source tool, uh, companies are uh, interested in using this particular tool because there's no kind of initial investment required in order to use this particular tool. Uh, next point what we're going to discuss is the latest version of Selenium. The latest version of Selenium is Selenium 2.0 web uh, and it comprises of uh, uh, tools such as Selenium IDE, Selenium WebDriver and Selenium Grid. Uh, Selenium 2.0 web is nothing but a suit of tools uh, and uh, before we discuss about uh, the this particular suit called selenium 2.0 let us look at the history of selenium uh, selenium was actually developed by uh, jason huggins in 2004 he was one of the uh, developers of this particular tools uh, working and working in thoughtworks he made this particular tool as an internal tool to be used in thoughtworks apparently what happened is that later on a person called paul hammett joined and uh, he joined the team in ThoughtWorks and steered the second mode of development that is your Selenium RC. The full form of RC is remote control. Okay. And uh, during the course of time, uh, Philips Handrego developed Selenium Grid in 2008, which further steered the parallel testing approach, thus reducing your execution time of testing your scripts. Uh, the parallel approach was basically done to uh, reduce the time to execute your test cases for example you have 10,000 test cases and you have a single machine how about distributing the same 10,000 test cases over let's say four different uh, uh, machines and uh, the execution time apparently reduces to a whole new level so that is why uh, selenium grid in came into play and moving further about uh, the aspect of your selenium uh, the history of your Selenium, the first uh, version of Selenium that was launched in the market was Selenium 1.0. It was also a suit of tools comprising of Selenium IDE, uh, which means the interface development environment, Selenium RC and Selenium Grid. Now, if you look at the difference between Selenium 1.0 web and Selenium 2.0 web, Selenium 1.0 and 2.0 uh, in terms of uh, common 
you know tools available in both of these versions are your selenium id and selenium grid whereas 1.0 web contains selenium rc which was replaced by selenium web driver in selenium 2.0 web that's the major difference now <clears throat> what is selenium id as a whole so let us speak about the suit of tools that were available in 1.0 web the first suit of tools that was available was selenium id the interface development environment it is a record and playback tool uh, which acts as an add-on of firefox browser when i say it's an add-on of firefox browser it precisely means that you need to have the firefox browser installed in your system and you if you, if you want to actually install selenium id you got to basically open a firefox browser and then install id as an add-on to it selenium id does not install itself in any other browsers apart from firefox so you can consider this as a drawback of selenium id let us go ahead and understand how does selenium id actually record transactions so when i say recording transaction it precisely means that recording your test scripts or recording your manual transactions so you got to basically make the tool understand what transaction it is supposed to record that is what you mean by recording your test scripts so recording transactions is possible with selenium id we have a record uh, button and a playback button the recording button in selenium id is basically used to record your uh, test scripts while the playback button is basically used to play back the test scripts that we have recorded now the recording is done in a particular format it's like the same format that we use in you know tape recorders tape recorders when we want to record our songs it is recorded right let's say in your mp3 or mp4 format so when we pay play back our songs in tape recorder actually the mp3 or the mp4 format plays back similarly in your record and playback tools precisely like your selenium id the playback happens of the recorded transaction and this playback is in the format format of selenius commands so precisely whatever recording we are doing in selenium id it is getting converted to selenius commands and these selenius commands actually gets played back when we are using the playback button of selenium id now this precisely is the symbol of your selenium id you can see with a pencil sign out here going forward the other tools which are available in selenium 1.0 web is selenium rc the rc full form is remote control it's a server by itself uh, which can be configured in your system uh, as an API. So you can ha you have to download this particular API from the Selenius uh, website, Selenium website rather, and then we have to configure the machine with Selenium RC. So this uh, was precisely uh, made to complement or rather the Selenium ID. Now, as I have told you, that Selenium ID could be only configured, and you can record as well as playback your test scripts over Firefox browser. So that means, it precisely means that you cannot configure Selenium ID over other browsers. You cannot record and playback your transaction over other browsers. So what happens with other browsers then? So it is a restriction with Selenium ID. So let's say I want to playback the script with let's say Chrome browser or uh, IE browser. How do I do that? It is not possible with Selenium ID. So in that particular scenario, we have to use Selenium RC. Selenium RC is able to run the scripts made in IDE over other browsers. That means I can use Selenium RC to run the scripts made in IDE in Chrome or IE. So that is why it is a complementary tool for IDE. So you can actually play back your Selenium IDE scripts through RC in other browsers apart from Firefox. So this is how the symbol of your Selenium RC looks like. If you see out, these symbols are important for us to understand that it is basically belonging to a particular tool. Similarly, the third set of tool present in Selenium 1.0 web is Selenium Grid. Selenium Grid is also an API by itself. It's a server-based uh, API. And we need to actually download this API from the Selenium website and configure our system or our machines or our computers with Selenium Grid. And this Selenium Grid is basically used for your parallel testing. Now, when we do parallel testing, we need to create a kind of architecture where we have a hub and a node. The hub is nothing but the machine in which the Selenium Grid is configured. The nodes are machines which are connected with the hub. And it is the hub which controls the node. And this is how through the hub node architecture, we are able to actually 
do parallel testing. We'll look at it uh, at a different point of time. We'll do a further analysis of these tools during the course of our training. Now, let's go back to the other aspects of your Selenium and the history of Selenium.